on KMIZ starts now. This morning at Bethel Park in Columbia, the ALS Association held a walk to defeat the disease. Thanks for choosing to spend your Saturday night with us. I'm Chanel Porter. ABC 17's Hannah Falcon is live in the newsroom tonight after hearing from one Columbia man who is battling ALS. Hannah, over 100 people walked a mile for this cause. Yes, Chanel, for the people who attended today's walk, ALS hits very close to home. But you know what they can't do? They can't hurt my spirit. 46 people on Team Tiger came to Bethel Park to walk for John Tiger Cleek, who is fighting ALS. ALS is a disease that attacks a person's nervous system, weakening their muscles and making it difficult for them to move around. I can no longer walk without a walker or a wheelchair. Today's walk to defeat ALS raised over $100,000. Team Tiger alone raised $65,000. Cleek's neurologist, Dr. Rick Barron, with MU Healthcare, came out to support his patient. Barron said MU Healthcare is testing new ways to treat ALS. Proud that MU Healthcare can uh, be on the cutting edge of trying new research drugs for ALS because we will defeat this disease. Event organizers said they wanted this walk to bring community to people fighting ALS who may have felt isolated during the pandemic. Everyone has felt it, but the ALS community has felt it even more because they're the ones that are at most risk. The cause of ALS is still unknown, but Cleek is hopeful. I'm a fighter. I've been a fighter all my life. The Mid-Missouri chapter of the ALS Foundation said that this is just one of nine walks they have planned. Reporting live from the newsroom, I'm Hannah Falcon, ABC 17 News. Hannah, thank you. Turning now to weather, today has been bright and sunny with some nice temperatures and not too much humidity to worry about. ABC 17 Storm Track forecaster Chance Gotch is monitoring these conditions from our weather center tonight. Chance, it's been a great weekend to get out and do some outdoor activities. Yeah, Chanel, I got to go out with my pup this morning and even let him jump in the pond a little. It's a beautiful day, and that trend is going to continue for the next several days. But right now, those temperatures are continuing to cool down. We're looking at temperatures in the lower 70s, upper 60s across the area. Some areas cooling down a little bit quicker. You can see right now in Columbia, we are at 72 degrees. Start heading northwest towards Brunswick, 69 degrees, and down toward the lake, just sitting below 70 degrees most areas. That is going to continue to cool down overnight. We're looking at a low at 62 degrees at 6 a.m. Going to be mostly clear, carrying on into 8 a.m. A little bit of a warm-up, 65, and by 10 a.m., we're starting to reach into the mid-70s once again. Mostly clear skies throughout the rest of the day tomorrow, topping out 86 degrees, and that stakes that northwesterly flowing wind. With that, that humidity is not going to be too high. We're looking pretty dry in the atmosphere due to a high-pressure system, but as we start heading towards midweek, chances of rain start to increase. So do the dew points. So we're going to start to feel that humidity really start to kick in Tuesday into Wednesday. We're going to have those dew points back into the 70s, so it's going to get a little bit uncomfortable. And with that, those chances of rain are going to continue to increase. We're looking at 40% by Wednesday. Thursday is going to be pretty scattered chances, but by Friday, looking at 30% once again. And Saturday, just some more scattered showers and storms. So our greatest chance is going to be on Wednesday. Now looking at the 6 to 10 day away precip outcast, the West is going to keep seeing that drought that they've been seeing for so long. We're going to get a little bit of easement with some more rain here in central Missouri. Now take a look at those temperatures. They're going to continue to warm up. By Thursday, we're looking at 88 degrees and heading off into this upcoming weekend. That rain is going to keep us cooler and keep us closer to that 30-year average. A Columbia man accused of leading officers on a police chase Saturday afternoon in Lake Ozarks and stealing multiple cars has been arrested. A pursuit began after officers responded to a shoplifting call at a Kohl's store at Eagle's Landing in Lake Ozarks. The man fled the scene in a stolen vehicle leading a chase along Bagnell Dam Boulevard. Police say the driver was then involved in a head-on collision. The vehicle left the scene of the crash and went over a cliff. He was then taken into custody and put into a patrol car. While investigating the scene, the suspect was able to break out of the cage between the front and back seats and take off in the police vehicle. He then abandoned the vehicle near the Porto Sima neighborhood and entered the lake where he was arrested by an officer. The suspect is being held in Miller County on a variety of charges. The Columbia Police Department says no one was hurt after shots were fired on Rice Road early this morning. 
ABC 17 news crews got to the scene on Rice and Boyd just after 3.30 this morning and spoke with officers who said they were originally called out after reports of seven to nine shots being fired. After arriving to the scene and shutting down part of Rice Road, police were able to find evidence of shots being fired, including two shell casings. Our crews on the scene saw officers searching the area with flashlights. We're told no injuries or property damage have been reported. However, police also say no one was arrested. One woman is recovering from a serious injuries after being hurt in a UTV accident early this morning. It happened in Callaway County near County Road 183 at 12.30 this morning. A man was driving the UTV when it went off the left side of the road and overturned. A 21-year-old woman was seriously injured in the crash and was taken to University Hospital. The man was not injured according to the crash report. Columbia Public Schools will, will require students and staff to wear masks this fall. This requirement is for everyone, regardless of vaccination status. The district is also encouraging all students and staff to be vaccinated, but no mandate will be in place. A spokesperson says the district has been working with the health department and other health experts to come to the decision, and the district will continue to look at the situation and make changes if necessary. The new mask policy takes effect on Monday. The district will welcome back 19,000 students and nearly 3,000 employees in just over one week. The CDC has signed off on a third coronavirus vaccine booster shot for people with weak immune systems. That includes people going through treatments for cancer, HIV, or those who have had an organ transplant. 40% of breakthrough cases of COVID-19 that put someone in the hospital are people with these conditions. Dr. Laura Morris at MU Healthcare says she supports the decision. She says she expects doctors that know patients with weak immune systems to be talking to them about getting a booster shot. Morris says those people should get their third shot at least 28 days after their second one. Missouri hospitals are filling up to the brim with COVID-19 patients, and the ICUs are treating a record number of patients. Information posted today on the state health department's dashboard shows over 2,300 people hospitalized with the virus, which is the highest number in seven months. A big concern currently is the severity of the illnesses. 690 COVID patients are in Missouri intensive care units, the most since the pandemic began. 383 people are also on ventilators. Mostly unmasked crowds packed into the Missouri State Fair this week as it opened in Sedalia amid soaring numbers of new COVID-19 infections. Fair officials decided in the spring to bring back the full event after replacing it with a much smaller youth livestock show in 2020 due to pandemic concerns. Fair officials estimate up to 340,000 people will attend the event before it closes on the 22nd. Just ahead on ABC 17 News at 10, where the news comes first. One person was stabbed during a protest rally in Los Angeles. We'll tell you how it all went down after the break.